Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it is the end of September, which means my uh, long vacation in October is coming up uh, pretty darn soon, just a couple more weeks, really. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do before we took the trip was modify the awning to tilt it down and make it more, uh, more functional, easier to use, make sure if it rains and it's left open accidentally or something, the water won't pool on top of it and, and break it which almost happened the very first trip I took with it. Uh, anyway, uh, before we get started, I feel the need to apologize to all my followers, uh, both on YouTube and on Facebook, uh, again, for my lack of activity over the past month or so. Um, I don't really have an excuse for it other than that work and my, uh, my side business has kept me really, really busy. Um, it's kind of unfortunate I have to I'm trying to build the side business up enough to, in a few years, have a whole lot of free time to travel and make videos. But in the meantime, it's going to take up a lot of my time, which means I'm not going to be able to upload as much as I could otherwise. So that's actually going to be hurting the channel until it's going to be improving the channel, if that makes any sense. So um, all I can promise is to do my best. So. Anyway, uh, we've got, uh, we got the van back down here in Pontiac once again. Mike is already getting started on it. The plan is to basically tilt the awning outward. As you can see, it's sort of, uh, it's sort of tilted inward because of the angle of the wall. It's made to be mounted on a vertical wall on a standard RV, so this curved wall of mine is causing it to be tilted away, causing the awning itself to come out at a 90 degree angle, which is not very functional. So we're going to build some kind of a bracket to put behind it to tilt it outward so that when the awning comes out, it comes down at an angle. So we're going to figure that out. Uh, but I want to show you guys something. Sumo! There's the Sumo! Look how silly he is. So Sumo is way overdue for a grooming. As you can see, he's got like two little growths on his back. This is how his hair grows when I don't trim it or anything. You see the shoulders, you get nothing. The butt, you get nothing. He just gets these two big tufts on either side of his back. His face gets all fuzzy. His legs get all fuzzy. And that's just how he looks. But he's doing really well. Come here. Oh, darn this camera. See, he's barely even limping anymore. Artie Sumo, come here. Yeah, the surgery worked really well. So he's doing really well. He's still got uh, several weeks of uh, healing time, though, so I got to keep him off the stairs until then. So he's just going to hang out here and uh, while we get to work on this awning. Okay, we got the awning off. As you can see, all this gunk builds up behind it because it sits flush once we bring the brackets once we make the brackets, we'll make them in such a way that it'll actually bring the awning out and away from the body, which will make cleaning behind here a lot easier. Uh, anyway, the way it works is these screws, two screws on each bracket, hold the awning in. The awning basically just slides in and out of these brackets. You may remember from my video where they put the awning on for the first time. And so these two bolts on each bracket go all the way through the roof, and there are nuts and washers on the inside. Now the tricky part we have is that if we simply put some wedges behind this, these brackets and bring them out, these bolts, which are going down at an angle like this, will suddenly be going in like this. But the roof is something like that thick. So the holes are at an angle. We can't simply move the bolts. We gotta make brackets that use these bolts at this angle to mount to, this, to these brackets. Uh, I don't know if I'm explaining that clearly, if that makes sense, but yeah, it's not as simple as it appears. It's like, like putting washers behind these bolts or something won't work. We have to make brackets that allow this to be pulled out while still using the same holes that were drilled for these, these bolts because I don't want to be drilling more holes in my roof. So anyway, that's where we are right now. Okay, so we got the brackets off. You can see the holes. 
we actually found some moisture and a rust stain, rust stain behind this bolt on the inside, which means this was leaking. So uh, it's actually good that we're doing this project because who knows what that could have done over time. So still haven't quite figured out exactly what we're gonna do, but we will come up with something. Okay, so we ran to Home Depot and we got this board. Um, it's actually not wood, it's, it's a plastic uh, comp composite whatever it is, but we actually found it on a, pe on a cart containing a whole bunch of other pieces of scrap wood and so they gave it to us for 70% off. Um, and what we've done, or should I say what Michael's done, is he's made these wedge pieces out of it. And basically, as you can see from this piece, they're just gonna mount behind to create the angle we need. Apparently I was way overestimating the angle we need. Um, so we don't need to do anything fancy with the bolts. We actually might just have to sort of bend it down at the at this point here. So we'll we'll we have to determine specifically what needs to be done. But um, yeah, these are gonna gonna provide the angle we need, and uh, they are completely water resistant. They won't rot or anything. And Mike even went so far as to sand the edges and everything, make them real nice. So that's uh, that's the plan. Okay, so we test fit these brackets with the wedges that we made, and we decided that these are not wide enough. Um, somehow we mismeasured the angle, and we need a we need a, a, a more of an angle. So what we did was we actually doubled them up, we doubled them up like this. We put them back in, test fit them again, and that was perfect. So what Mike is doing is he is rebending these bolts. As you can see, we bent the head at an angle there. And he's got to rebend them to fit the second wedge, so that when they go in, they are flat against the metal bracket because they have to sit flush against this surface. But yet at the same time, match the angle of the roof where the bolt, the holes are already drilled. So that way we can use one bolt, still be flat against this, and not have to drill new holes. So once we reassemble all of these, we'll get back to you. Okay, so here's the finished product. Got the bolts there, we put caulking in there. Um, when they put the thing on in the first place, they didn't put any caulking in there and I found signs of rust already. So we caulked them this time. And uh, got two wedges, both made of uh, non, uh, you know, weatherproof plastic. And then we stuck the bolts through and as you can see, bent the bolts so that the angle matches the roof line so that when they're up, it'll be like that. So basically all we do is shove these bolts through the roof and put the washer and nut on the inside and then put the mount the awning back on. And we'll have a nice straight awning that'll come down at the proper angle. Yeah, it's gonna work. Awesome. Okay, there it is. It's raining, so we can't apply the caulk yet, but as you can see, nice and straight. So after he finishes putting that last screw in, the next thing is just going to be to open her up and see if the angle is right. If it's not perfect, oh well, because we're not doing this again. It's not perfect, it's really close. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see you folks in a minute once we're done here. Okay, here goes nothing. Yep, there it is, much better. Like Look that. at that angle. It's almost high enough for me to walk under here. Maybe not quite, but that's okay. When you're sitting under it, it's perfect. Water will slip off, and I can reach here to get these little legs out much easier. Hmm? Yeah, it's a little lower than, than I am tall, but that's okay. Okay, awesome. now we put her away. Okay, folks, that's it. Finally got the awning exactly how I want it. I'm really, really excited. I'm looking forward to using it when we go down to Georgia. So uh, 
We're actually not done yet. Actually, we're done working, but this trip isn't over. From here, I'm going back toward Fenton to the Seven Lakes State Park, and I'm gonna spend a couple of nights there. So I don't know if uh, this and that is gonna be one video. I'm guessing not, but maybe. Uh, either way, stay tuned and we will see you at the state park. Alrighty, good morning everybody. We are here today at Seven Lakes State Park Campground. Actually, this is technically called Sand Lake Campground inside Seven Lakes State Park. Whatever. I'm hoping the wind isn't co cause a problem because I forgot the microphone with the wind socks on it. Here's hoping everything works out. Anyway, it's a nice little campground. Um, as you can see, that car, my, my folks decided to drive down and uh, we just had pizza at the picnic table. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so as you can see, the, uh, the awning is working great. The new angle is perfect. I can actually walk under it. See? It's just the right height where I don't have to worry about hitting my head. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was raining earlier today and I had the awning out and the water just runs right off of it. No pooling, no nothing. It's absolutely perfect. So anyway, um, yeah, you see you got a little sand lake is out there and I got the queen parked on a, parked sideways uh, so that we can just sit out and, and look at the lake. Um, got a kids play area over there. You know, fire pits, electric, nothing, nothing too fancy, basic, very nice little campground. Um, unfortunately, all Michigan State Parks have these stupid uh, fire pits that are absolutely useless. The fire is way down in there, you don't get any of the heat, and the fire can't get any oxygen, so you can't really build even a decent fire. So I didn't even bring it, bother bringing any firewood, because what's the point? Uh, anyway, we're going to wander around and explore the park. Uh, unfortunately, Sumo's leg is still healing, so he's really not in condition to go on long walks quite yet. So i got to leave him in the van until we come back. Uh, but uh, my mom is doing something when she goes to places like this. I'll have to show you what she's doing. Hey, Mom. Huh? Tell us what you're doing. Oh, well, over time, uh, the sowing and the mowing of the land has taken down the environments of the milkweed, which is needed by the monarch butterfly for its um, caterpillars. They only eat milkweed. So I and lots of other people, and you should too, I have been collecting milkweed seeds or buying them. I grew these. And now we're distributing them in places that are more or less high and dry, get a lot of sun, are visible from the sky, because butterflies have lots of eyes, thousands of eyes, and that's how they find them. So if you plant it under a tree, it really doesn't do that much good. And then they'll gradually uh, replenish themselves into the area, so I'm seeding Michigan. So how, how uh, many plants have you seeded so far? Uh, I don't know. I've done lots of roads. I've bought hundreds of plants just by my mail uh, the last couple of years and now these are the ones that I grew. Show them a pod. Here's a pod. At the end of the season you end up with this. And those are all seeds with their little their little wing, wing things. This one's not quite dry. But they'll still be fine if I drop them in the in the uh, meadow. So you drop them somewhere where they won't get uh, mowed, up, mowed down or, right, or drowned we'll, or anything? Right, we'll mow them. Eventually they'll, okay. when, they, when they break open naturally, they'll break open and fly away. Yeah. And then after that it's a numbers game. So I, I choose the places I put them. And they're, you know, I don't put them by the expressway because I don't want to see any butterflies, you know, smashed into the front of a truck or something. Um, so you put them where they have a chance of proliferating and where the butterflies can grow without being harmed. And that's it. The nature takes over. So the milkweed is the only thing, the only plant where the monarch butterfly can breed. Correct. And so, and over time man has mowed down the milkweed not realizing that that's a problem. Yeah. So, so now you, we're, you and many other people are doing this all over the country, yeah, huh? Yeah, reseeding. The, the, the butterflies fly from Mexico kind of diagonally across the continental, continental United States this way up to, up to Canada. And then they turn around and they go back down to Mexico. And we even found the place where they, where they roost in Mexico over the winter. So they have to have a way to survive all the way up from Mexico through Canada because actually the, the, 
the trip is multi-generational. Butterflies breed and die and fly their whole lifetimes on this particular road and their descendants continue the trip. So, but they're great. I love them. They're beautiful. I remember butterflies, you know, monarchs from when I was a little girl were proliferant in Michigan. So I'm helping to put them back. everybody I think I'm gonna end this video here um, hope you enjoyed it as usual uh, I don't know how the audio turned out I hope it's okay I really have no idea at this point but uh, Zumo and I <laughs> hi Zumo what you doing you like your chair yeah you're gonna get trimmed tomorrow aren't you yeah <laughs> anyway we're just gonna sit here I'm gonna read my Kindle for a while and then uh, maybe do some video editing and uh, yeah, just have a relaxing evening and head home in the morning. So once again, thanks for watching. Remember to go to facebook.com slash ramblingmichigander to follow along and see more content. And we will see you all next time. Take care.